All right, let's take a look at some of the retro, vintage, and pop culture things that I sold online this weekend. First up, I'm actually gonna start with the books that I sold because I wanna take a look at what those were. The first one is actually a school book, but it has some amazing artwork in it. It has like, uh, let me show you. So it's a book called Basic Spelling Goals Number Four. And it was actually a library book because, you know, it's spelling and stuff. So it would be in school. Like, look at that. I love that style. That looks like this is actual old school style that I would love to emulate today. That sort of thing. Like it doesn't see, it seems like somebody trying to make it look like it's an old drawing, but it's actually, it actually is an old drawing. And it's got a lot of cool sort of two-tone color stuff going on in it. And of course, it's teaching spelling. A 1960s style book from 1960. That's going out. Then I have an instructional book from the 80s, which means Rubik's Cube. This is the original classic how to solve the Rubik's Cube book that every kid in the 80s had. And uh, it showed how to do it saying that it was more of a concept than the colors, so it's a black and white book. We're not gonna show you what the colors are, we're just gonna show you like, here's how to turn one similar section and another similar section, like trying to go the whole like, don't solve the colors, solve the puzzle sort of thing. I had the book, still never solved a Rubik's Cube, ever. I was able to do one side, and when I got that far, it was like, now what do I do? Then, a big giant book of poetry. And this one has some great illustration in it too. This is the big golden book of poetry from 1971. And the illustrations are by Gertrude Elliott. So it's a collection of different sort of poems and poetry and things like that. But also with just fantastic elaborate illustrations in full color and in black and white. Let's check out a few more here. Ooh, that's a good one too, actually. It looks kind of terrifying. So a lot of short poems in that, and I want to say nursery rhymes, but it's labeled as poetry. And then one last book, an old Captain Kangaroo and the Beaver story. Actually, I say that like there were a bunch of and the Beaver ones. What I meant is Captain Kangaroo story called Captain Kangaroo and the Beaver. This book is based on the television show, Captain Kangaroo. Uh, the book itself is from 1972. And it shows a story of Captain Kangaroo. He's at home and there's all the crazy wacky characters that he has on the show. That clock that had a face on it. Then there's Mr. Green Jeans outside and all of a sudden, hey, Captain Kangaroo, we're the animals and we want to hang out. And apparently he has dinner with all the animals and they're like, yeah, let's do that. And then a beaver is sad and he starts crying. And Captain Kangaroo's like, why so sad, beaver? And then I don't know, it kind of goes on from there. A lot of great drawings. Uh, who did the artwork in this? Did I say that yet? Marie Nonat apparently did the drawings. Yeah, the Captain Kangaroo books are always really, really unique when I get those. Then also from 1972, I have the game Sorry, the classic game that basically teaches you how to be annoying to someone when you win. Got the original board there, of course and it has the different cards. The instructions are actually part of the non-eco-friendly sort of box that they always put these games in. They had to make them as big as the boards, so they had to fill everything out, else out, even though it only had cards and a couple of game pieces. Let's print the instructions on this big spot to fill the whole thing. This is a Mary Poppins LP from 1964, and I think it just has the songs. I don't think it has like any of the play, but on the back, yeah, it says, Spoonful of Sugar, Chim Chimmery. Chim Chimmery, for some reason that felt weird when I said that, like it's supposed to be Chim Chimney, but it's Chim Chimmery. I love the fact that they tried to do different illustrated versions of Mary Poppins from Disney. Like there's actually books that are out where they, some of them tried to look like the actual characters and then other ones they were just like, let's make a more cartoon-like and that's what this one is. Even though there actually was an animated segment in the movie, now that I think of it. Although they didn't animate the characters. Huh. A Miss Piggy and, I almost said Mr. Piggy, although I suppose that's the way it goes because it's Kermit and Miss Piggy and they were together and they're in love and she's wearing a tiara for some reason. I think this is just a still from one of the movies. It's not necessarily one of the puzzles they normally do where they take the puppets and pose them in 
you know, different settings, which I've had puzzles like that before, but I don't think I've ever actually had a Miss Piggy and Kermit puzzle. And then one last thing that I got because I knew somebody would find it as amusing as I did, this embroidered picture frame of what I want to say is a sad clown hobo and a, I don't know, what would you call it? A patchwork girl embroidered on a wooden frame. Very 1970s. This is the type of stuff where it would just appear on a wall somewhere and it would stay there forever and collect dust and nobody knows how it got there or what the thought process was. But they were just so ingrained and now it's just super kitschy and I love it. It's got the, they got the rosy cheeks. When I saw it, that's what it made me think of and I loved it. And it took a while, but somebody else decided that they thought that it was fantastic too. And that is some of the interesting retro and pop culture things that I sold today.